All right, welcome everybody. Looks like we got people rolling in. <clears throat> While everybody's rolling in and getting comfortable, uh, we'll be getting everything going live, uh, I believe on Facebook as well. But uh, we're really, really excited here. Mr. Brian Curtis uh, joining us, who always brings nugget after nugget. Uh, and then there's, there's this other guy that happens to be here you may or may not have heard of. I've heard he's famous enough, uh, Mr. Barry Jenkins. Uh, we're we talking about increasing conversion through better conversation. Uh, and, uh, you know, before we jump in, we want to make sure uh, everybody knows you have a Q&A section down below. Please ask questions as we're going through this. We want to make sure you guys get the most out of it. Uh, this is about Brian and all of his wisdom. Uh, I'm actually excited. I got to see a sneak peek right before we got going. And <clears throat> he already threw a couple things up that I'm like, ah, interesting. I can't wait to learn about this. So uh, I'm excited. And really anything and everything we always do, I think, comes back to increasing that uh, lead conversion, that ROI, right? I'd rather convert higher and spend less. So uh, please chime in as we're going. Use that Q&A section. Uh, we'll try to be monitoring Facebook Live questions as well. So ask them as they pop up so we can get the most out of this next hour for you guys. Uh, anything I missed there, Barry? Uh, are you still going to sing the Star Spangled Banner to start us off? Uh, you were singing. I was dancing. Come on. Oh, right, we're going right, to right. get this together. Come on. <laughs> Never you know, a dull I, moment with you guys. I appreciate that. You know, <laughs> you get on some of those webinars and we're like, okay, let's pretend like we care. No, never a dull moment. With Barry. <laughs> there's, there's, you know, there aren't a lot of people that can keep up with me and Gabe definitely has no problem. <laughs> Absolutely. And he gives uh, it right back. So it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Uh, speaking of, uh, because nobody knows or has probably ever seen you, let's do some intros. Uh, Barry, you want to kick it off? Yeah, so Barry Jenkins, head realtor in residence, uh, been a Wailopo user for five years um, and uh, worked for Wailopo around four-ish years as well. And uh, my team, we do between 800 and 900 units a year. So uh, really just uh, crushing it on the Wailopo platform. Gabe, do you want to say yeah. a little bit about uh, you? Yeah, uh, so Gabe Cordova, uh, team lead uh, in Boise and working on building a team here in Denver uh, as well. Really kind of just went all in uh, with Wailopo uh, a few months ago after I've been running uh, Firepoint as one of the co-founders and president for the last four or five years, really understanding leveraging building technology. Uh, and these last few months has been awesome. I've spent a lot of time with uh, Barry actually really getting in, like I said, going all in with my local remarketing, AI, video ads. Uh, and it's been incredible what we've been able to do with that, not just with new uh, inventory or new leads coming in uh, and how we're finding them and talking to them, which is why I'm so excited about this conversation, but even our old existing database. And I was just sharing with uh, Barry by just really adjusting what we're saying, who we're looking for, and then what we're saying to them. Uh, we've signed a little over 7 million in just like the last probably 14 days. Amazing. So uh, at, uh, over half that is existing stuff, but uh, it ties into what we're doing today. So what I would I love, Brian, introduce yourself and, and take us away because everything that you're going to be talking about is a lot what Barry and I preach about how to identify. So I'd love to learn what else we could be saying to increase that conversion. Thanks, Gabe. Appreciate it. So Brian Curtis, um, I run a small team in Arkansas. Um, we'll do probably 450, 500 transactions this year. Um, but my passion really is coaching and training. So I have a small coaching and consulting company. So anyone who's interested in that, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. That really wasn't the purpose of this, but heck, I'll give take a second to plug myself. So also wanted to say that I'm very excited. You know, I've been a Wailopo client. Um, apparently I was one of the first 20 clients that, and I didn't realize that until I went to a conference one year and they gave me, they gave me a sweatshirt for being one of the first 20 clients. I was like, man, maybe I should have negotiated better. Not really. Wailopo is a great product and, and I've literally been using it uh, five or six years now. And, and the beauty of it for me is it consistently gets different and better. You know, I'm a shiny object guy and the great part about Wailopo, I don't have to change. They'll, they'll create a new shiny object right for me and I don't have to go buy something new. So I really appreciate that as someone who can can get into that. But, you know, I love this. This is this is my my lane. This is the thing that I love to do the most is talk about how to convert better. And the reason being is I figured out a long time ago, there was only two ways for me to do more transactions. That was to call a heck of a lot more people, which none of us want to do, or 
do better with the people I'm already working with. And that felt like a better thing to do. And, you know, I'm an and guy. So heck, you know what? I can call more people and do better with them. Eventually we, we end up with, with a ceiling, but most of us never get to our ceiling. So, you know, this is about how can I be more efficient and effective and have better communication with people. And I'm, I'm hopefully going to show you guys some stuff today. You're going to go, oh, I never thought about that. I never thought about that. And, you know, full disclosure, there's no, there's no rocket science that I'm going to, there's no trick. There's no, oh my God, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. But I think that, that a lot of times I've taken little ideas here and there and, and integrated them in a way that makes sense. So I hope that, I hope that's what happens anyway. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We're just going to go through our slide deck today. Barry said he was excited because I actually had a slide deck. So uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, right. and uh, Brian coached me for a very long time. Uh, and so I can't say enough about the, you know, the growth and the support that I had as a, as a coaching client of his. So can't say enough good stuff about that. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And I work side by side with you for a few months, Brian. I'm sorry, man. I know what it must've been like putting up with that. <laughs> um, and hey, Daniel already asked a question, but some of these guys keep your questions coming. If we don't answer it right away, it's because I know there are going to be things popping up a little bit later that pertain to it. So I'm going to grab them as we're in that section. So do keep those coming, but don't worry if we don't answer it right away, because some I'm going to hold off on until we get into that section. So awesome, Brian, go for it, buddy. Perfect. I want to make sure that you actually are seeing my slides. I have two monitors and I've been known to share the wrong one for 15, 20 minutes before somebody tells me. So anyway, so we're going to talk about conversations for conversion. So I want to say this, um, we're going to talk mostly about phone calls today. And it doesn't mean that 90% of what we're going to cover today can't be used in person, but I'm going to, I'm going to focus on phone calls because I think that's one of the places that, that we have the most opportunity to grow. So for me, I have four objectives of every single phone call. The first one, and by the way, if you skip step one, don't do the rest. And, and I know that sounds really an extreme thing to say, but in essence, what I look at it is if I don't make some attempt to build rapport, then I might as well talk to the wall. And the great thing about talking to the wall is at least I know it's not listening. So step one for me is build rapport. And, and I wanna talk about that real quick. And, and I'd love to hear Barry and, and Gabe's thought on this too. Here's the traditional way that we build rapport. I'm going to find something in common with you. In other words, oh, you like music. I like music. You like pizza. I like pizza. I hate that. Now, why do I hate that? Well, first of all, I've got to do a lot of talking before I get there. Like, I'm not going to call somebody up and go, hey, this is Brian. Um, I want to talk to you about things we have in common. That, that conversation doesn't happen. So we've got to build up to that. So what's the trick on the phone? And, and this is the thing that I think most people don't even think about or consider, and I would love it if you start to consider it. So um, I mentioned earlier, I have a team in Arkansas. Those of you who have listened to me for more than 30 seconds probably realized I did not grow up in Arkansas. I do not have that Southern drawl, that, that way of talking. And there's nothing wrong with that way of talking. But what I want to point out is if I'm talking like the way I talk right now to someone in Arkansas, they're, they're, I'm out of rapport. Why? Because the traditional Southern person is going to talk slower. They're going to draw their words. They're going to say y'all. They're going to say fixin'. They're going to say those things. And I have to be a little bit of a chameleon. So one of my favorite things to say is in every new relationship, someone's going to be uncomfortable, volunteer to be that person. So what do I mean by that? When I, once I've done an intro script, and we'll talk about that, once I've done a quick intro, I'm going to give the other person an opportunity to talk, and then I am going to go out of my way to mirror and match them. Where am I going to mirror and match them? First, I'm going to mirror and match them with volume. As you can see, I'm a pretty loud person by nature, mostly because I don't hear very well and I don't even realize I'm loud. But if somebody gets on the phone and talks to me like this, I'm not going to yell at that person. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk in the same volume that they're going to talk. Let's talk tempo. Some people talk really quickly like I do. Once again, when I'm in Arkansas, I have to slow down a little bit. I have to understand that people in Arkansas talk like this. They have a little bit slower paid cadence to the way they talk. Now, that's not universal. I'm making a little bit of a stereotype and I apologize if I'm, insult I'm insulting any Southerners. I'm making some generalizations. But your opportunity when you get on the phone is to listen to how loud someone talks, how quickly someone talks, and even the, the inflection they talk with. I'll even add a different thing. People chunk things differently. And here's what I mean by that. As you guys can tell, I can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. If I'm talking to somebody who doesn't talk that way, some people talk like this. Well, you know, Brian, it's, uh, you know, was thinking about buying a house. Okay. And, you know, they'll talk slowly. They'll talk in smaller chunks. I challenge you to talk in the same chunks that they did. So uh, that's rapport for me on the front end. And I promise you that 
you'll get significantly better conversations simply by trying to be in rapport with with language that, with volume tone and chunking so gabe barry any thoughts on that at all yeah i have a question just real quick just so people can uh, wrap their head around it and we're obviously going to have more points here at some point one this is initial phone calls when it's new opportunities coming in or when you're calling your priority alerts all of them is it really the same steps that you could apply to any of your phone calls or is this primarily new leads new inquiries what where, where do we apply this so rapport replies one applies 100 percent of the time like step one of every conversation in my opinion should be getting it in rapport so some of these other things like you know, here I'll, I'll do the little head discovery is step two so if I've already done discovery with somebody, I'm not going to call them up and go, hey, did you want a three bedroom or a four bedroom? Because now I look like an idiot because I didn't take notes and pay attention to that person. But you know, ultimately, the rest of this stuff can be done all the time. So but discovery, step two is basically what I'm doing. I'll go over what that means for discovery. Uh, step three for me is set an appointment. Now, if, if I'm in a room with 100 agents and I go and I ask the group to write down what's the objective of a phone call, 95 of them will write down set an appointment. I don't know if you noticed that was step three for me and that's my priority. Yes, I absolutely want to set an appointment, but I want to set an appointment after I built rapport and after I've done some discovery. So because sometimes I find out if I do a good discovery, I don't want to set an appointment with this person. This person can't afford to pay attention. I'm not going to go show them 10 houses. This person, you know, they they lost their job last week, and I'm sorry that they lost their job, but I'm not going to go show them houses. They have to get a job before I go show them, you know. So discovery to me is an important step ahead of that. And then the thing I notice that almost nobody does is button up. And that's one of the things I'm really going to focus on today because our button up opportunities are so important. Like, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I don't know if, you know, Gabe, you, you run a big team as, as do you, Barry. What's your assumption, if you don't mind me asking, for an agent, if I get somebody on the phone, how many people are they assuming that agent's already talk, that that client's potentially already talking to? You guys talk about that at all? Yeah, we're always, and I'm curious what Barry's number is, but we're always thinking four to five. It's always okay. four to five. Just always assume whether they're talking or they're on their sites. So, it, which means they're probably talking to or at least hearing from. Yeah. I, so, uh, Barry? I was just going to say, I just want my agents to recognize that there's always someone that is uh, that sounds better, seems more intelligent, better looking, better car, you know, that you just have that general insecurity so that you can keep your edge. I love it. My number is seven. It's a random number I picked. I'm not sure if it's right or it's wrong. It doesn't matter. But if I assume the other person's talking to seven people, then I need to figure out how they're going to stop talking to those other six people and talk to me alone. And that's just kind of where I go on that. So, all right, um, why we need scripts. So I'm not a big script guy. And, and, and as I put it, the thing that says why we need scripts, but we do need what I call an intro script. And I'll share what my intro script is. Here's why. I listen to phone calls. Those of you who, who, who watch Cat Call on Lab Coats have probably seen me on there. So we listen to phone calls every week. Here's what I get. Uh, this is uh, Brian. Um, is this Bob? That's a horrible intro script. But I hear that probably six out of 10 times. Why? And why is that so bad? Well, if I don't know your name, you know what I am? I'm a salesman. I'm trying to sell you something because my friends don't call me up and go, uh, is this Brian? None of my friends do that. They go, hey, Brian, it's Barry. You know, hey, Brian, it's Gabe. That's that's how they talk to me. So the second that you come in with a script like, uh, is this Bob? You've immediately set that person's radar off and you've immediately created a wall that you've got to bring down and you're going to have to do twice as much work on the front end. So learn an intro script. Um, we're going to do what well, I've got. When I say scripts, I've got questions for discovery is probably a better way to do that. And then I do have some button up scripts or exit scripts. So this is my intro script. It's real simple. It's Brian Curtis with XYZ Realty. It looks like you made an inquiry, some properties on our website. Are you looking to move soon or are you just window shopping? So, you know, Gabe, Barry, I'd love to hear you guys have some kind of intro scripts as well. I'd love to hear um, those as well. I, no, you can, Gabe. Uh, mine's similar, right? So, hey, Gabe, uh, uh, hey, Brian, Gabe here at Core Group uh, EXP. Just wanted to uh, touch base. Saw you recently visit the website and see how we could be of service. Perfect. Uh, it is it, very service oriented uh, and open ended. Cool. Barry, you have any other yeah. thoughts on that? I like to uh, introduce myself, say who I'm attempting to reach, and how I came into contact with them, specifically 
Facebook or Google, not my website, because they don't know my website. Gotcha. So, and I want to point out a couple of things, and those are great scripts too. And, and let me just say this, you know, there's, there's this thing that people have said, Kristen always gets mad at me when I say this, but I'm a firm believer of the best program is the one that you use. So, you know, there are, there's ways to be better, but at the end of the day, come up with something that sounds smooth, sounds like it's not your first phone call. Even if it is your first phone call, make it sound like it's not your first phone call. Here's why I use what I'm doing for. Are you looking to make a move soon or are you just window shopping? That Are you just window shopping script? I'll shout out to Dale Archdeacon, that's his script. The um, really a great thing about that is it gives us the opportunity to go, oh, I'm just window shopping, right? It, it, it's that pressure release. So they don't necessarily feel like I'm going to try and sell them something. Oh, I'm just window shopping. Now, if you're going to use my script or a similar version of it, here's the thing you don't want to do. You ask them a time frame question. I hear this all the time for people who use this script. Oh, I'm just window shopping. Great. When are you looking to move? No, I just told you I was window shopping. Don't create an artificial pressure with that. Great. The response to that is great. I, I, a lot of the people I talk to are just window shopping. With that in mind, what are you guys looking at? So you got to transition to the next natural step in that question. So, you know, and it's going to be the same with any of the stuff that Barry or Gabe are doing. Understand this, why local leads are great leads, but they're not necessarily bottom of the funnel leads. And what I mean by that is they may not want to go look at a house this afternoon. They may be six, 12, 18 months out. There's nothing wrong with those. Those are the leads that we make really good money on because we follow up with them over time and build rapport. But Trying to get someone to just immediately move is not what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do, again, is establish some rapport and bring, some, bring them some value all along the way. So if somebody's not ready to move, that's okay. And, and it, we don't have to be disappointed in that because most of us plan on being in the business six, 12, 18 months from now. And by the way, six months will be here tomorrow. Um, I actually had a doctor's appointment that I was setting up six months from now, and it was in January. So, you know, it, it feels like it's just tomorrow. And, and so I just want you guys not necessarily to be disappointed when someone says, oh, you know, I'm just window shopping or I'm six months out, I'm 12 months out. By the way, that's what they are today. Sometimes that changes, right? We've all had that experience. The guy who's six months out, we call him in six months and he bought a house three months ago. That happens a lot. So don't get disappointed in that. Just understand this is a, a process we're going through. All right. Say so, hey, Brian, on that real quick. <clears throat> we say don't get disappointed. I mean, really, isn't it what you should expect, especially when you know, you know, where, where you're fishing and what leads you're getting, where they are in their journey? Is that kind of what you're hoping for? So then you know when to put them into your funnel versus don't get upset. Is it, is it, it should be just an expectation, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and again, every once in a while, you're going to get, I think it's probably around the 1%. You guys probably have more data on that actually at YLOPO than I do, but you're probably looking at about 1% or looking to move in the next 90 days, right? And then the other 99% fall somewhere between between that period and, and a little bit further out. So, you know, here's the reality. If you just close the 1%, you'll actually have a good ROI. But if you want to have a kick butt business, it's following up and building those relationships with those people who are 6, 12, 18 months out. That's that's where the money's at in this business as far as I'm concerned, because otherwise, you, if you're only going to close the 1%, then your marketing budget has to be triple is really how I look at it. Yeah. And so. I I, uh, I, I agree, um, Brian, and I think it's helpful for people to understand that people don't wake up in the morning and decide, you know, I, I, I think I'm going to go buy a house today, you know, the, the, and, but I know for me, when I started telling people this, I don't know what they thought I said, but I know what they think I heard or what they, what they think they heard me say, which is don't try. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you know, get them on the, <laughs> get, get them on the phone and don't push. They're a long time out. And so then they end up just kind of kicking the, you know, something lame, like, um, uh, do you mind if I email you? I think that's their close, right? And that's not good. That's not a good close. If you guys are doing that, don't do that. Um, I, I also don't believe people plan ahead. I think they're just overwhelmed. I, I, that's just my opinion, but well, absolutely. You know, it's kind of funny when Y Lopo only did Facebook leads. I used to say this all the time. Nobody woke up this, this, this morning, looked at their significant other and said, honey, let's buy a house. What should we do? Let's log on to Facebook. That conversation's never happened. That's not how, how, the, how the journey works. The reality is, and you know, about 70% of the transactions we do are two people, you know, whether that's husband, wife, spouse, significant other, whatever the case may be, about 70% is two people who are actually the contributing to the, to the household. Here's the reality. 
my wife for years was looking at houses. I didn't even know it, not because she was hiding it from me, because it was just what she was doing, you know, and that happens all the time too. So understand that, you know, it, it's just a matter of doing some discovery. So let's talk about discovery. Who? So I, the reason I love this, and again, I'm going to shout out to Dale for this. Uh, the reason I love this is because it allows us to do something that we all know. Who, what, why, where, when, and how. We've all had that. You know, we learned that in like third grade, right? These are these are the things that we're going to do. So here's what I want to talk about when you do discovery. Who? So who isn't Gabe and Barry? Who is Gabe who lives in Denver and da 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 da, da does this? And Barry who lives in Virginia Beach who does this and this and this. It's it's an in depth who. We want to get to know people. We want to get to understand them. It's not yeah, it's Gabe and Barry. Okay, that's not what it's about. I want you guys to go deeper and understand people. I want you to ask those questions. What, you know, what are you looking for? I'm looking for a three bedroom house. Great. You know, where are you looking for it? I want to be in this location and I want to be in this school district. And I want to, and, and don't be afraid to ask it all along these ways, those deeper questions. I feel like the thing that one of the things that we're doing as an industry poorly, we're not asking the next question. Where do you want to live? I want to live in Virginia Beach. Perfect. Is there any specific school districts in Virginia Beach you want? Or is there any specific neighborhoods in Virginia Beach you want? Same with, you know, any of these other questions, we can always take that just one step further. And remember this, if you're asking questions, you're winning. And a lot of people are trying to tell, 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 tell. I'm going to ask you to flip that on the head and ask, 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 ask. So Gabe, you unmuted. Yeah, no, I, I love that. One of the, and it was funny, you said tell, tell, tell. As soon as they start talking, oh, well, we're moving to Virginia Beach, whatever it is. And I, and I can't remember, I ripped it off from somebody like everything else I do, but it's, oh, that, that's exciting. Tell me more. Tell me more. It's an easy way. And once they open up, you, they just start coughing it up and coughing it up. And then you find out it ends up being, you know, 70% them, 30% you, and you're right. Once they start talking, you're winning. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. If I'm, if I'm talking, 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 you know what they're doing? They're bored. The flip side is if they're talking and talking and talking, time's moving on and they don't even pay attention to it. it it's, a, it's a time warp that happens. If you get that other person talking, that's one of the objectives that I don't actually put on there. Uh, one of my four objectives, but I want per people to talk. If I can get them to talk more than 50% of the time, I'm going to win. And that's what it's all about. So anyway, use these 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 six W's, who, what, why, where, when, and how. And actually on our team, we have a sheet that we print out and we have people pull, keep this in front of them. Why? Because during a conversation, here's the, here's the thing about scripts. The buyer slash seller slash potential client, they didn't get the script. So sometimes we go off on a path and we forget to ask an important question. Like, for example, you know, how much? Like I've, I was listening to a phone call the earlier day and the person was all excited and they were set an appointment, but they had no idea what the person's price range was. You know, they could guess based on the fact that they made an inquiry on a $279,000 house, but 279 might've been their top price. It might've been their bottom price. How do I know that? We didn't bother to ask. So keeping this in front of you and just going through and kind of use it as a checklist is something that really works for our agents and something we've been very successful with. So. I, I love this. And I'm going to, we have something very similar and we just, uh, we use follow-up boss. So as soon as we get somebody on and, and we get through that intro and they start talking, uh, we just launch, <clears throat> launch an action plan. And what it is, is it adds a note. And so it's our version of this, but I like this a little bit better, but what's great is it just automatically adds the note right on that profile you hit the edit button. Now we can take our notes right there on and it's a living document time stamped on that lead profile. But I really like the who, what, where, when it, it breaks it down different than the, uh, the, the way that we have it. So I, I really like this. Um, I want to jump to one of the questions though. Please. Uh, and Daniel, I haven't, I haven't forgot about you, but I know I'm, I'm saving that for a certain section, but Randy said, Hey, um, a lot of the time, maybe more than 50% of the, after the intro, which is similar to Brian's, uh, they hang up. Let's love to get feedback from both of you and I'll throw mine in too, but feedback on where do you go from there? What do you do with that? So did uh, we get disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great script, Barry. And I love that. Call him back. You know, I know. And, and that's, that's where I'm going to go with that. Hey, Hey, Barry, it's Brian. I'm sorry. I think we got disconnected. I think it's a great script. What are they going to say? No, I hung up on you. They might. And, and it surprises me, Randy, um, that you're at, at a 50% hand, more than a 50% hang up rate. I'll be honest. That surprises me. I'm not saying that you're, that, that it's not happening. I'm not calling you a liar by any stretch of imagination, but, um, I would work on making sure that uh, I would tweak your intro. You know, is it, something something might be amiss. Here's something else I notice as someone who listens to a lot of phone calls. Sometimes I get I listen to this. 
Hey, this is Brian with uh, Curtis Realty Group. Uh, you made an inquiry uh, on on 123 Main Street and just wondering if you know if you noticed my tone was different there. And, and what I want to suggest to you is, and I listened to a lot of phone calls, so I wish that I was exaggerating. Pretend like you're happy to talk to her. And, and I'm not saying that that's what you're doing, Randy. I've not listened to a single phone call that you've made, but be excited, be happy to talk to them. You know, it, it, I can't tell you the number of people that I that I get that just don't really that just sound bored to death when they're the agent. Well, guess what? If you're bored to death, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to somebody who's interested in their product. So I, I would I would listen to your own phone calls and see if you're potentially doing that. And then I would also listen to your own phone calls and see if you really are following the same exact script every time. And if you're not, switch to Gabe, switch to Barry, switch to mine, switch to something and, and just do a little bit of split testing for you there. So I know, I know that's great advice. I know for me, if I, when I was too excited and I don't mean I sounded too excited. I mean, I was just happy somebody answered the phone. Hey. It eked out in not only how I said things, what I said, when I said it, everything about it. I, I really wasn't uh, approaching the call the way that, you know, my CPA or my attorney, if they were to call me, that's how you should sound. And um, I think maybe the reason why I introduced myself first is so they know I'm not a telemarketer. Um, but that's just my, it's also, wouldn't you agree, Brian, that some of this is market specific and how you deal with the local people as far as, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, yeah. here's, here's the reality. Like I said, I, I live in Denver now too, in the Denver Metro, just like Gabe, we talk to people differently here. So, you know, if I'm calling somebody in Arkansas, I'm going to be a little bit slower. Hey, this is Brian Curtis with Curtis Realty Group. I'm reaching out today because you made an inquiry about property on 123 Main Street. Just wondering if you're looking to make a move soon or if you're just window shopping. Whereas if in Denver, I, I'm going to talk faster. And that's just the reality of it. And I'm playing I'm playing a numbers game. Again, the, the part of the problem with our intro scripts is I don't get to, to, to have a five-second blip of what Gabe sounds like before I talk to him. Now, I know Gabe, so that's different. But my point is, is that we don't we don't always get that. So we got to go with the law of averages. If you're if you're someplace where people talk quickly, talk quickly. If you're someplace where people talk slowly, and, and again, I'm making generalizations, talk slowly. It's not 100%. And, and here's the other thing. Um, somebody's talked about this. What, what if I call back and they hang up and they don't answer? Send them a text message. And, and by the way, I would even take that to next message. Send them a video text. And, and everyone's anti-video, even though everyone talks about video. I know, I see the number of video texts that go out daily. They're not very many. Send them a video text. Hey, this is Brian Curtis. Sorry, we got disconnected. Uh, whenever you get a chance, give me a call back. And I uh, just love to have a great conversation with you. There's an opportunity to do that. So anyway, that's where I'm at on that. Yeah, I think that's huge. And that's, that's exactly what, what, what we teach as well. If they hang up, we'll call back. And at that point, if they, if they do hang up, they don't answer a lot of times, but you'll be surprised how many times they do. Uh, but then send the text. Hey, uh, looks like we, or it sounds like we got disconnected. Uh, let me know how I could be of service and when would be a good time to connect. I want to make sure we're not dropping the ball on this end. Love the video idea. 50% uh, to me also seems very high. I listen to a lot of calls, not just in our team's account, but in others. So I would definitely, perfect advice, listen to the calls. Because I think what we think we're saying and how we sound sometimes is different. Uh, and we'll never start changing what we say and how we say it until we listen to it. I love that so. game. Great question. Great question, Randy. All right. So another thing I want to talk about is if we get into um, this. So there's current tank. I did a quick video on this a, a couple months ago, but there's there's three types of questions you can ask. You can ask past tank questions. Hey, what happened in the past? You know, tell me about your, your the last time you bought a house. You know, tell me about the last time you worked with an agent. Those are past tank questions. Most of the questions that we ask are future tense. And I want people to think about what future tense means. I'm putting pressure on you. So remember this, we're doing what's called interruption marketing. Like nobody was sitting around waiting for you to call in case you're confused by that. You, you know, they put an inquiry on their PPC lead, their Facebook lead. They probably didn't expect you to call them. That seems insane to me because we gave you, asked you for your name, phone number, and email address so that we can call you and text you and email you. But nonetheless, people still don't have that expectation. So we are doing interruption marketing. So understand that 
And when you start putting pressure on people, when do you want to move? Where do you want to move? How are you going to do it? Da, 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 da. Sometimes that causes people to, to clam up. So if that happens, switch to current tense. Hey, by the way, do you currently rent or do you currently own? That is a completely no pressure question. Here's another completely no pressure question. Hey, by the way, do you currently live in the area or you know, would you can are you considering moving here? Again, it's no pressure. Like I live here. Great. You know, and why am I doing that? Because again, I'm getting them to talk and and they're and that will allow me to kind of release some of that pressure and then I can go back into it. So um, I just like some of these and, you know, I'll go through these and I'll, I'll send Barry and Gabe my slide deck. If you guys want to share it, you can either way. But, uh, you know, you know, so would you be planning on selling your current home or keeping it? It's a great question. Oh, you know, we're going to keep it. We're going to do it. You know, these are questions that are just a procedural and people don't mind them. So I think it's a great thing to do to get some discovery. And by the way, about half the time I listen to phone calls, people don't bother to even ask if they own a home. You know, we're out showing somebody a, a property that's, you know, going to, that's it's got a multiple offer notification at Friday at three o'clock. And these people don't have a house to sell. They're not going to win. You know, I'm not saying we don't show it to them, but at least set uh, re realistic expectations. So uh, thoughts about that at all, Gabe? No, I love it. And we all want more sellers right now. We, we all do, right? Yeah. Uh, and what we are seeing is there are a lot. Of, first of all, if we ask most, you know, we, I can't run a poll as no time, but what is most sellers' biggest concern right now, right? It, it's not if I'm going to sell my house or am I going to get top dollar. I think they've been conditioned to know that right now. It's where the heck am I going to live? Am I going to be homeless? <clears throat> so a lot of what we're seeing right now is they're coming in looking at that next chapter you're talking about the future and looking forward a lot of opportunities coming into the database right now aren't necessarily registering as sellers now some are and they're lower a funnel because now they're looking for that but you hit the nail on the head here it's what are we asking and what are we learning to make sure we're going the right direction are we focused on their needs and 100 percent right we're not asking this question enough or maybe we're not asking it the right way but we need to identify this because first of all, we're talking two sides now. We all want more sellers and we're just not asking enough. So I, I love this and I love how you're phrasing it. Yeah, and here's the great thing about this too. So remember, the reason that people are going to work with a real estate agent is because they feel like we have something to offer them. And I know that sounds like a very simplistic thing to say, but how about offering them a plan to sell their house and buy the next house? And, and if you're having that conversation with him, like, man, Brian really knows what he's talking about. He's got a whole system in place to make sure that we can do this very challenging thing. So, but I can't give them that system. I can't give them an opportunity if I don't even bother to ask the question. So keep that in mind as you're moving forward as well. All right, let's see. Other discovery questions. Hey, Brian. Brian, yes, I, I no. um, now the traditional uh, agent is calling and asking how can i help you and the advice that you just gave is very different than waiting for the consumer to say what do you need what do you want right like they're not saying it that way but that's actually what they're saying yes. can you speak to that because i feel like most people are waiting to be told what to do so i'll i'll, I'll agree with that i'll also say that even if they're not most people will do what you tell them to and I know that sounds a little bit arrogant, but like when I teach listing presentation, step two of my listing presentation is take control. Why? Because I've got a $500,000 asset that I want to sell. Do I really want somebody who's going, well, you could do this or you could do this, or I don't really know. What do you want to do? Like imagine going to your doctor and, you know, like I've been doing that a lot lately, but, you know, I've been going to doctors and just, I can't imagine going to my doctor and going, hey doc, um, you know, I, I think we should do this to work on, I, I have prostate cancer I and mean, that's not really a big deal to me, but I just will share that with you. I can't imagine going to the doctor and go, you know, I was on the internet last night, doc, and I thought that this, this drug that, that I read about, maybe I should take that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk to my doctor and let him be the professional he is. And if he's like, you know what, Brian, I really don't know what we should do about your cancer. I'm getting a new doctor. So, but real estate agents do that. They go out there and go, you know, I really don't know how to hell to sell a home, but you know, what do you want to do? So I don't want to work with that guy. I'm not going to pay you $30,000, you know, 6% of 500 grand. I'm not paying you. That's not even right. So yeah, that is right. $30,000. If you don't know what the heck you're doing. 
So apparently I can't do math today either, but I'm going to show up with a plan. Now there's going to be high D personalities who are going to push me through that. And I get that. And I need to know how to deal with that, but that's only 10% of the population, by the way. So the other 90% of the population wants you to have a plan and wants you to be professional. And guess what? Professionals have a plan to get you from point A to point B. Stop acting like you don't know what you're doing. Most of you do know what you're doing, or if you don't, take some more training so you do. So um, even if you can't do a confidence so far, excellent. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah, no. Confidence is everything. And I appreciate that 100%. Well, and a, a great way that, you know, I think to transition, first of all, Brian, I just thought that was spot on, is something along the lines of, um, you know, based on what you've said, in my professional opinion, and then we just say what we think, you know, we, and I, and I did not know that stat about the 90% not being a high D. For those of you that don't know the DISC profile test, a high D is a driver, aka they just like telling people what to do. Um, and most aren't that way. Apparently, I didn't. No. I didn't realize that, but it makes sense. So, so if you want to talk this for a second, seventy percent of our population is high S. S is amiable. They're people who want someone to tell them what to do. They don't want to make a decision. They don't want. They just. They just want it to be over. They're like, I don't want to understand this process. Da, da, da. I want someone who's going to come in, take it, make sure it happens, and make sure it happens smoothly understand if you're got that person and you're going, eh, I don't know what to do. What do you think you want to do there? You've, you've lost all credibility with that person because they're already that person. They need someone who's going to be in charge. So, you know, and again, be careful when you, when you ask those questions, you can tell who a driver is. No, Brian, I don't want to do that that way. Okay. Let's talk, you know, so you'll, you'll figure out pretty quick who a driver is and, you know, you tweak for them, but ultimately it's the same. So I want to go real quick back to this, some discovery questions. This is my absolute favorite discovery question, bar none. What are you looking for in an agent? Let me tell you why I think it's important. First of all, no one ever bothers to ask it. And second of all, I'll tell a quick story. We had this in a team meeting over four years ago. I said to our team, we need to start asking this question. So one of the agents on my team, literally then that same day was making phone calls and she asked that question. And this was the buyer's response. I have no idea what I'm looking for an agent, but I know you're my agent because you're the only person who bothered to ask. I love that. So it, it's, if you don't take anything else away from this webinar, start asking that question, it's vital, so. All right, other things, um, yeah, great. Um, by the way, people will tell you all kinds of crazy things. It gives you an opportunity with that to decide maybe you don't wanna work with them. I expect you to answer the phone call phone every single time I call. Okay, great, let me talk about why that's not realistic and, and you can go through it that way. It gives you, it, it, it bubbles up objections. It does a lot of things, it's a great question. So uh, how many homes have you looked at? Why do I ask this question? Gabe, maybe you can tell me why I asked this question. Sorry, it's on mute. Uh, I mean, one of the right off the bat is try to identify without asking, are you working with an agent? 100%. That is the purpose of that question for me. There might be some other benefits to it. But how many people ask this question? All right, do you have an agent? Yep. Now I've, now I've got to go through a whole objection handling process. Do you, have you signed with that agent? How long have you been working with them? Ask this question instead. How many homes have you looked at? If they've looked, great. Who showed you those homes? Oh, I've been going, you know, I call listing agents. I go to open houses. Great. So it sounds like you're not working with anyone specific. Yeah, no, great. Perfect. Now I know where I'm at. Or the flip side of that is, oh yeah, Bob at Remax is, is, you know, I've been working with him for three years. He helps me on every single house I work with. So these are questions that help us get to what information we need without asking the question, those yes, no closed ended questions of, do you have an agent? Yes, I do. All right. Now I've got to, you know, work my way back through it. So. If they have not, great. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Will you, you figure out what your market needs are? These are all things that we can do. The agent question for me is a, an absolute must on every call. And, and I'll tell you why. So I've never had this experience, but I've had the second experience. The first experience I hear people say is literally they show up to show a house and the person shows up with their agent. So if you... <laughs> If that's not the, a colossal waste of your time, I don't know what was. I haven't had that experience, but I have had this experience. Hey, Gabe, it was great showing you houses today. By the way, I pulled a couple other houses up and uh, you know they're well within a mile. Let's go take a look at those. Oh, we can't. We've got another appointment to see another house. Okay. And true. You know, what did I do? I didn't do a good enough discovery and now they're going to go work with somebody else. And I can't tell them not to do that. You know, it'd be, you know, so 
do some discovery. And these are some great discovery questions. All right. So we mentioned this at the beginning, the majority of the people that you're going to talk to um, are not, you know, unless they're assigned calls, referrals, past clients, SOI, those type of things, you're probably not going to have people who are instantly ready to go look at houses. So what we got to look at is what happens when people are more than six months out. So when people tell me, yeah, hey, I'm looking to buy in six months, eight months, you know, sometimes they'll give you a month. I want to buy, you know, in August. That's That was a big one around here, um, simply because school starts in August. I want to be in my new home before August. Now, obviously, that's pretty close right now. But in January, that was a different type of question. So, you know, here's the thing I think people miss. I, you notice the first word I use is great. Great, perfect, awesome, whatever. Those are affirmation words. Be affirmative when you do it. Great. The majority of people I speak to are at least six months out. That gives us a great, you know, time to put a program together for you. Out of curiosity, you know what your credit score is. Here's what I'm doing with credit score, by the way. I am looking for a reason to meet with somebody that has nothing to do with showing them a house. Because if someone's six, eight, 12 months out, I don't have, if I go show them a house, I might want to do that. I'll show you some scripts along those lines too. But the credit score is most people don't know what their credit score is. So it gives me an opportunity to say, Hey, that's awesome. Um, you know, uh, you know, if they do know, yes, I knew, was it a credit mortgage pull or you date yourself? Um, most people are, are can pull it themselves nowadays. And I can say, Hey, by the way, why don't you come meet with my lender? Cause your credit score might be actually a little bit different if you pulled it on Experian, if you pulled it on uh, credit karma, any of those type of things. Those things, they are not the same credit score. And go do it, by the way, if you, if you haven't done that before. Pull your credit karma credit score and then have a mortgage lender pull it. Those are different credit scores. So, you know, if you have an 800 credit score on credit karma, you're probably going to be just fine. But if you got a 680 on, on credit karma, you might have a 620 credit score on a mortgage pull. So this is an opportunity for us to get in front of people and to provide them value. So anyway, I like those type of things who just get, get an opportunity to meet with somebody because every agent I've ever spoken to has told me they're better in person than better on the, than on the phone, right? I'm sure you've had the same experience, Gabe. Oh, 100%. So I want to grab a couple of these questions. Uh, and Danny, I promise I haven't forgot about you. Um, so I want to go through all these and then come to his. Uh, Aaron asked, uh, I'm getting a lot of not looking right now, even though they're looking on my Wailopo site. Uh, what is your response for that? Me or you, Gabe? What's that? Me or you? No, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll go. Okay. So, so, and we'll see these sometimes with the response to Raya, or we'll get that on the phone. So I'll go with just if it's on the phone right off the bat. Oh, Aaron, hey, thanks for letting me know. No, tell me more. When you say not right now, are you thinking this fall or next spring? Okay. So what, what Gabe did there at the end, by the way, is what's called a, a double bind. And so what that is ultimately is we're saying we're giving them choice A or choice B. Both of those are good answers for us, right? All we're trying to do is get them to answer. So here's what I love about that. You gave them choice A or choice B. Guess what choice A or choice B? The answer never is no. So they can't say that. So you guys planning on buying in, in, in the fall or are you thinking about next year? No, that, that's never an answer. So what am I doing? I'm forcing them to engage their brain and, and communicate with me. And that's one of the things that's super important. So many people ask yes, no questions, put themselves in a box they got to dig themselves back out of. So mine's going to be a similar, you know, absolutely. You know, out of curiosity, do you have a time frame in mind? Oh, yeah, you know, we're thinking about, you know, never. Okay, great. Well, the, you know, feel free to continue to look at my website and I can talk to him about some other stuff. Oh, you know what? You know, our kid graduates from high school next June and we're thinking about moving then. Perfect. And now I can have another conversation about that. Um, so whatever it is, get it in a way that's not a yes, no question. And, and I love very much what Gabe said as well. So Yeah, and, and, and again, I think it's uh, things that we expect. And this is why I think when Brian put up earlier, you know, you have to have some scripts. And, and I think a lot of people, no, I don't think, I know a lot of people are like, scripts, gross. Scripts aren't terrible. And it's just things that when we get, when we're prepared for an answer or, or a response and we know what to say, that's a script. And sometimes they're very short, but they save you. When you're expecting and when you make these calls, you will get that a lot of times. I'm not looking right now or I'm not looking anymore. And to me, I, I've been doing this for a long time. I plan on doing it for a long time and providing these opportunities to my team. I just need to know where to put you in my funnel because between remarketing and Raya and then just follow up cases, we'll move you through the funnel. It doesn't, I, I mean, I would love right now, but because I've been doing this and have that mentality for years, I have a lot of right now that we're not looking now as a year ago or two years ago. So expect it and then just have that script so that you can just figure out 
if it's not now, when? Right? And then the right questions. And I've also found a lot of times current market when they say we're no longer looking or we're not uh, we're not looking right now, it's they they're afraid that they can't sell and buy. There are a lot of sellers right now that have kind of held off because there's not inventory. I want to know that so I can update my CRM. So when the now comes, is it a buyer or is it a buyer and a seller? So just expect some of those responses and then focus on the service and ask the questions to just fill in the blanks to now just move them up through your, through your pipeline. Absolutely. And, and here's yeah, a couple, um, go ahead, Barry, please. Yeah. I was just going to say that, uh, you know, when someone says, you know, not right now, or, you know, I'm just looking, um, first of all, my disc profile test, I'm 100% I and 100% S, zero D and zero C. So, uh, I'm coming from a place of, I should just be, uh, hugging people for a living. And so, you know, when, when they give me an objection as to why they uh, don't want to work with me, I make them feel amazing about the reason they don't want to work with me. I, I find a way to make it an amazing reason and how I respect them for that reason. And then I just ask a question that keeps the conversation going. Um, uh, and, and so for me, my go-to question is, okay, well, whenever you move, what are you hoping to change about where you live? And whatever they tell me at that point, is their wish list for the next home they're going to buy. I love that. And, and again, was that, a cross, a, was that a cross back, middle back, uh, uh, sideways? I, I, don't I don't know. I was trying to come that. up with a fancy term. I don't know exactly what that is, but I, but I can tell you, that's right. I'm sorry. I, I can tell you this, what it does, what Barry did is first of all, he acknowledged them and told them what, what they're doing is just fine. And, and so many people, and it's not really an objection per se, but it might be so many people handle objections by telling people why they're wrong. Step one of objection handling, and I know that's not what this class is about. Step one about, of, of objection handling is acknowledge and affirm. And that's what Barry's doing. Great. You know, the majority of the people that I talk to are just looking at my website. Out of curiosity with that in mind, you know, what kind of things have you guys been looking for? Or, hey, is there anything that you really don't like about your house right now? Or, hey, is there anything you really love about your house right now? Get people talking. And, and the more you get people talking and the more you ask low pressure questions, it, 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 it's, so, it's so beneficial. And I appreciate that about Barry. Barry is very smooth and he gives himself no credit for having any D. I don't believe there's zero D, but well, that's another conversation. So anyway. All right, I just want to check time. We got about yeah. 15 minutes left. All right, go ahead. Okay. So, um, you know, it, just some other things that we talk about, you know, the, the great the majority of people I speak to are at least six months out. You notice how I'm affirming that. Great, I'm putting them in a group. I'm making them regular. I'm making them normal. I'm not making them bad. Like, why the hell are you looking at my website if you're not, uh, if you're not looking to buy? You know, that's, and we, no one ever has used those words. Well, I'm hoping they didn't. But sometimes it comes across that way. So make sure that you're telling people it's okay. So yeah, let me just ask you a few questions. That's a great, a great thing to do. So anyway, um, I'm going to skip through some of this stuff. USPs. So um, Gabe, do you guys use any kind of USPs at all? Uh, you know, it, it, it depends on on the what we've really been working with on on the sell side. And you kind of touched on this earlier is having a plan. Uh, so we, we have a couple of guarantees where, you know, guarantee to, you know, find you a new home without having to sell your home or sell and keep you in it. So we've got a couple different, you know, relocation or, you know, stay in your home and buy plans that we're using, but, right. but not as good as we probably should. Okay. Well, I'm a big USP guy. I prefer guy. FedEx over US, USPS. <laughs> yeah. FedEx has better delivery time. Me too. I'm a FedEx guy myself, Barry. <laughs> But what a USP is, for all those of you who don't know, it has nothing to do with delivering mail. It's USP stands for unique selling proposition. So, you know, we talked, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes ago, how our, my team makes the assumption, Gabe makes an assumption that someone's talking to four or five people. I'm making the assumption they're talking to seven people. The number really doesn't matter. But if you keep that in mind, that you're not the only agent that they're talking to, you have to give them a reason to decide to work with you. So USPs are one of those things that we can do. So, um, here's an example, you know, we get this, I completely, you know, I'm working with another agent. Well, I completely understand you've been talking to other agents with that in mind. Have they offered you any unique ways to save money on the purchase of your home? And, and let me say this, if you're going to ask questions like this, if you're going to, you're baiting them, you're hopefully you're going to say, no, no one said anything about that. If no, well, I'm happy to tell you about some of the programs that we have. And hopefully what they're going to say is, yeah, I want to know about how to save money on my home. So, you know, for example, we have a program where we can get a free home warranty and a free appraisal. 
that's a $1,500 value. You know, so you could say something like that. By the way, if you're not committed to any other agent, I could show you how working with our team could save you up to $1,500 on the purchase of your new home. Is that something you're interested in? And by the way, if you're going to ask those questions, here's what most agents don't do. They don't shut up. And so they'll ask the question and then keep talking. So ask the question and shut up and let the person do it. So um, great opportunity because here's the reality. People know this. If I tell you the majority of real estate agents that if you're, I'm working with another agent, you'll leave me alone. Or they might have you know somebody show, it, show, show them one house and they feel like maybe they're working with that person. So don't be afraid to dig deeper. We've talked about that. Um, so here's another program. We've got what we call a move up buyer program. And ultimately what that is, is we have a way to save people up to $10,000. Now, let me just say this, to save $10,000 in our process, you're going to have to do a two, the accumulative $2 million transaction. So I'm saying this and it's true, but if someone's selling a $250,000 house and buying a $300,000 house, they're not saving anywhere close to $10,000 but I can show them the program. So, you know, I'd be happy to come over and give you an idea what your hope was for. By the way, we have a special program. We save you up to $10,000 on buying and selling a house. Would that be something you might be interested in? And then shut up. So, and here's just a couple other, we have one for the public servant program, which is for people who are firefighters, who are EMS, who are, uh, let's see, clergy, veterans, basically anybody I can throw in the bucket. And, you know, again, we give those people a discount on listing and we give those a discount on, on buying as well. So those are just opportunities out there. Um, every time that I present this stuff, people say this, you're giving money away. And I want to argue that, no, I'm doing marketing. So I'm getting people an opportunity to work with me. And remember this, if I've got a pick from seven agents, not a single one of those agents told me that they were bad at their job, weren't going to return phone calls, um, would follow up whenever the heck they felt like it. Every one of those agents that that, that client has talked to has said that they're the best agent ever. They're going to do a great job. So you've got to find a way to differentiate yourself. And sometimes just offering them some sort of unique selling proposition on, on its face will just say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just pick that one. So, um, somebody, go ahead. I, uh, so Brian, I learned about USPs from you. And uh, about a month and a half ago, I did a voicemail drop to 300 past clients. And all I said was, hey, this message is only for past clients. I have a friends and family program uh, for you or anyone you know that is uh, considering selling in the next six to 12 months. So if that fits you or anyone you know, you definitely wanna call me back. And within a week, I had three past clients call me and say, yeah, I'm looking at selling in the next six to 12 months. I couldn't believe it. Really simple, right? You know, sometimes we just gotta give people a reason. And we got to give people a reason to call them back, you know, and Barry, notice what Barry said with that. He didn't, he didn't like, you know, hard sell it. He said, by the way, if, if you know anybody who's at, I'm just offering this special fam, fam, friends and family program, you know, just give me a call. And, and it's low pressure and, and it's just, it's really pretty simple. So um, anyway, we've got all these different programs and, and I know we, you know, short time, I could spend an entire webinar on doing USPs, but I want to go um, skip ahead because we, we've got just a couple minutes left. Um, Gabe and I talked about this on the front end. So verbal pacing and leading, I'm going to go out on a limb and say most of you have never heard of this. Some of you may, any of you guys who are NLP nerds like me have probably heard of it, but verbal pacing and leading is pretty simple. A pace is something that's true for the client. So there are universal paces. What's a universal pace? The sky is blue, the grass is green, the sun comes, sun sets in the west. Those are universal paces. They don't really have any real strength in sales, but a pace is more like this. It's something that's personal. You know, you've got two kids and each, you want each of those kids to have their own bedroom. You want your, your kids are in sports and you want them to live near the sports field. You're a person who likes to walk instead of drive a car. So you want to be in downtown. Those are paces. Those are things that are true for you. And by the way, the more personal you can get with those paces, the more effective they will be. And so uh, I'm just going to show you how we do that. So there's paces. What's a lead? So a lead is something that I want them to do or believe. So for example, a pace might be, I want you to meet with me. A pace might be, I want you to write an offer. A pace might be, I want you to write a stronger offer than this ridiculous offer that's $10,000 under asking price. So there, there's leads that I want them to do. So let me just show you how this works and how we use this in the sales process. At the end, 
before you're setting an appointment, you could do something like this. So Gabe, you know, it's been great chatting with you today. I just want to do a quick recap. So you said that you wanted a, a three bedroom home and you said your budget was up to $300,000. You mentioned that you had a couple of young kids and it was very important that you had a large backyard and ideally you'd like a community pool. So uh, Gabe, if you don't mind, I'm muting. Let me just kind of chat here. So if those things were true for you, what are you saying in your head as I'm, as I'm recapping them? You listen to me. You okay. heard me. And, and, do you, and do you know what your internal dialogue is? If I say, so you want a three bedroom home, what are you saying? Yes. Yes. So it's interesting. I, I did this with Barry earlier. There's a, there's a, our mind works in patterns. And so what am I doing? Yes, 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 yes. What am I going to do now? I'm going to ask you a question that I want you to say yes to. So with that in mind, the next step for us to meet in person, I have time both on Tuesday or Wednesday, which, which works better for you. All of a sudden, I'm in this mode of agreeing with you. Or with that in mind, I think we should meet this afternoon. How does that sound? Yes. And, and I swear people will say yes and not even realize that they say yes. And now, granted, if they're, it's an, if they're an absolute no for whatever reason, like, you know, I'm going out of town this afternoon, they're not going to change their plans, you know, and do that. But what I'm telling you is if somebody's on the fence with this stuff, it pushes them in the direction that you want them to go. I do this when, I, when I'm writing offers. So, you know, we've looked at 27 houses. Um, we've written six offers and we've missed them all. We have not done a single appraisal gap. With that in mind, you told me that this is the house that you absolutely have to have. I believe that we should write a really strong offer. How does that sound? Yes. So okay. yes, 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 yes. And then so it's just pace, 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 lead. There's other things that you can do that are more advanced, but I love this as a button up for a phone call. That is All money. That is money. money. <laughs> so, all right. I'm going to cover up my button up scripts and then I, I got three minutes, so I'm going to be fast. So here's a great question, by the way, that it, in a button up. Is there anything else that we haven't covered yet? Because sometimes we get in our mode and we're doing our things and they had a question that they didn't, that they forgot about. So this is a great question to come back to it at the end. So here's another button up script. You know, understand that if somebody's a Ylopo lead, there's a good chance they're a Commissions Inc. lead and a Realtor.com lead and a Zillow lead and a sign call. They're all these things. So what I tell people is very simply, hey, there's a probability that a whole bunch of agents are going to call you in the next 24 hours. When they do, just tell them you're working with Brian Curtis. I literally give them a script to tell the next agent, oh, no, I'm working with Brian Curtis. And I promise you, if you use a script like that, they will, they'll tell you. And by the way, I hadn't even made a commitment that, that this person was my agent yet. I'm making an assumption that they're my, that they're my client. So great, great button up script. Um, here's another one. If you're out driving around, you see some houses on, or on a website and something interests you, call me and I'll be happy to research it and help you with any home. Because here's what happens. And Gabe's had it happen to him. Barry's had it happen to me. And I haven't even asked him, but I'm sure it has. I'm working with a client. Everything's going good. They drive by a FISBO, call that FISBO, and they call me up and go, hey, Brian, I bought a FISBO this afternoon. They don't use the word FISBO. I bought, a, I bought, I bought it for sale by owner. Okay, that's my fault because I didn't button them up. Or, hey, I was driving around and I saw a sign and the, I called the guy off the sign. Great. Now, you know, I can't do that. There's nothing I can do about that. So remember, teach them how real estate works. We make assumptions that people understand how real estate works. Really bad assumption. So, and then um, my, my last one uh, is I, I like to just button up. Hey, I'm going to put together a quick plan. I'm going to email you some listings uh, that hopefully will meet your criteria. You take a look at them, pick four or five homes, and I'll set up some showings. By the way, which day works better for you, Saturday or Sunday? So when you leave a phone call, make sure that A, they're not going to call another agent. B, if they do talk to another agent, that they're going to tell them that you're working with you. And then C, that you have some kind of plan so that they feel comfortable. So um, I, I, I got literally one minute left. Gabe, thoughts? I mean, I, I love it. I mean, I'm already like, actually, as you were talking about, I was actually updating my my action plan and follow up boss for the who, what, where, when I act, because we're using that. So I really, really like that. And then I loved the uh, pacing and leading, like getting the yes, the yes, the yes. I mean, it's for, you're recapping it. You listened, you're getting them to agree with you. And then that button, I, I, I love that. That's, that's my, I mean, there are lots of takeaways. The, to me, that was really, really, really good. I know a few people are saying they can't type fast enough for some of the scripts, all that. 
everybody's getting a link. We'll, we'll, we'll convert this, download it. You're going to get a way to go watch it. You can pause it, stop it, rewind it, slow it down, speed it up, all that. I, I love it. I think, I think it just comes down to, you know, finding out where you're not uh, doing your follow-up. And I want to get to Daniel's question really quick because he was the first one to ask. Daniel asked, are you doing this uh, uh, primarily new leads, but are you doing this right off the bat? Uh, or are you allowing Raya to do it first? What is your answer? Should we be calling these leads ASAP or allow Raya to do her thing first and then do what you're saying? Raya is a backup to me. And, and not because Raya is not a great system. It's an amazing thing. I've converted leads at two o'clock in the morning when, you know, I wouldn't suggest you do that. But I've converted leads at ridiculous hours of the night with Raya. But Raya is a computer. It's a great computer, but it's still a computer. Raya cannot build rapport. Raya is, you know, it, it's, it's basically text messages and it's intuitive and very intelligent. So call people. And I want you guys to remember, this is a study from 2010. So it's probably outdated. It's probably worse. 311% chance, higher percent of chance of someone answering the call if you call them right away. 311%. Why? They're in the mode. I'm looking at houses, my phone rings, you know, and so especially in this world, we're all eight, we all have ADD and ADHD and all those kind of whatever the heck they are. I've got so many of them. I don't even know, but you know, I'm looking at, at this, now I'm eating dinner, now I'm watching TV, now I'm playing golf. I mean, life goes so much faster today. If someone's in the mode of looking at houses, get in front of them, talk to them right now. That's my answer. I, I couldn't agree more. It's bold. In fact, we added another layer. So we believe in it so much. It's Riot goes off right away. We have an ISA team that goes right away. And then the agents, if they're not dealing with the inbound and there's time, now they're grabbing them as well and piggybacking on top. And before you're concerned, is it too much? No. Are you going to upset somebody? Yes. Is it the is it the majority and going to what builds your pipeline? No. Keep doing it. What he's saying, it's a cadence. Just go. It's a majority. You're going to build that pipeline and go. Uh, you will lose way more people by not calling enough than you will ever lose by calling too much. Absolutely. So, and, and I'm going to answer the last question real quick. Um, do you use the same opening script? My opening script is going to be, hey, you were this Brian Curtis, Curtis Realty Group. You were looking on my website. I'm just reaching out to see if you're looking to make a move sooner if you're, or if you're window shopping. I don't care if that's someone who I'm calling who was a priority alert. I don't care if it was someone who made an inquiry 30 seconds ago. And the reason is, is and, and again, I've got about three scripts that I've got memorized. Everything else is just a, an iteration of, of different things. So yes, my intro script is absolutely the same for every PPC, Facebook, Wilopo lead that I get. Yeah, and they don't really, remember, they don't, they're not realizing it. They are on multiple websites. They don't remember what happened from one day to the next. <clears throat> they, want, they want service and everything that Brian was just talking about is focused on them, asking questions, providing service and, and listening. So you don't have to overcomplicate it. Like what's my script when it's brand new or what's my script when it's a priority alert or what's my script when they come back after 200 days of inactivity? It's the same. Absolutely. So, yeah. Gabe, I really appreciate it. Barry, appreciate you guys. Um, I'm three yeah. minutes late for my no, next this webinar. Was, so, <laughs> this was really great. And uh, Brian, I think we, Brian, I think we all agree that you're a lot smarter than you look. Man. Really appreciate it. <laughs> that, that I believe that's referred to as a backhanded compliment. So uh, I'm not sure I take that. Um, I, I promised that I would do this also. Guys, the Wilopo conference, October 12th, 13th, and 14th. I'm going to be there. Um, so if you like what I had to say, come. If you don't like what I had to say, then just don't show up for my my speech. But but I look forward to seeing everybody there. The conferences are great. And, and I'm not a conference junkie. So uh, the, Wilopo is one that I always go to, and it's well worth. There's always great stuff. We always learn stuff, and, and it's a great networking opportunity. So hopefully I'll get to see a lot of you guys out there um, come October. Thanks, everybody. Yep. And for those of you looking for the recording, sorry, Brian. For those of you looking for the recording, we will be sending it out. Everybody register with an email address. If you're joining us via Facebook, it's already in the live Facebook stream. So you can rewatch it there. You'll also be able to find it in the Wailopo Success community on Facebook. So lots of ways to get this. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.